What is going on guys, Kieran here. It's been a while since I've done a video, isn't it? Um, but I got back from seeing Transformers the last night. Last night! And uh, I'm going to make a video on it because... I don't understand, like, right, here's a thing, because, let, let's be real, the Transformers films have not been good for a while, like, Age of Extinction is garbage, it is the most, I can't even watch it, like, I've watched it again, like, I watched it again recently, and bro, what the fuck, it's crap, um, but I figured, hey, I'll go see the last night, and I actually... I'm gonna get a lot of fucking shit for this because I I actually kind of liked it. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, so yeah. I guess, I'm gonna, I've written down a couple of fucking notes. So like I'm just I'm free handing this video. I don't give a shit. Um, but I've written down some notes that I've got on my computer here, and uh, we're gonna go over them. And uh, we'll start off with the cons, not the Decepticons, the cons of the movie. Um. Because uh, there's a couple. I mean, it's not a perfect movie. It's 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 not good. Like, but it's better than Age of Extinction, so I will take that. Um, okay, so there are a lot of unnecessary characters in this film. Um, what's her name? I Isabel. Like in the trailer, you see her, and she's like, you almost think she's gonna be one of the main characters of the movie, but she's really not. Like, what the f why? Why is she in the film? She just sort of tags along. She's that sort of character that just sort of like, you know, sneaks into wherever they're meant to be. Like, she'll sneak onto a ship, she'll be a stowaway, that sort of thing. Garbage. No fucking point to her in the movie. Squeaks was crap as well. Like, then again, we already knew that, because look at him. There was also a MacGuffin sort of plot device. There was this staff that they had to go and get. Um, God damn. Every Transformers film has a MacGuffin. That they have to go after. In the first one, it was the Allspark. In the second film, it was the Matrix of Leadership. In the third film, it was kind of like those pillar things that Sentinel Prime had. In the fourth one, what was they? What were they doing in the fourth one? See, that film is so forgettable. No, it was the Seed. That was it. It was. It was a thing called the Seed, and it just it. Yeah, there's always a MacGuffin that they have to go after, and um, yeah, so there's that. I'm gonna get into the story in a bit. I'm just sort of going over my problems with it so far um but we will go into the story because this is a spoiler review by the way i'll put that in the title i probably didn't even mention it before but hey why not um weird names for the decepticons and just autobots in general i don't understand what has happened but my god they've got such weird names now though i i'm trying to think of that because I, I can't remember them they're pretty forgettable there's Nitro Zeus, he's the only one I can really remember because he looks like Shockwave and he looks mint. And he's voiced by John DiMaggio, you can tell immediately. He was pretty cool, but then like, they have some other ones like Mohawk and Dreadbot. Come on, he didn't even fucking try. Um, what else, what else, what else? Cogman is like, eh, yeah, because, you know, he's, he's meant to be regal, he's British, but I don't know. And we will get into the story in a bit. Um, Optimus is completely underused. He's, he's barely in the film. Um, Quintessa, the main villain. Because Megatron isn't the main villain again, because they've done it again. Where Megatron is the lackey of someone else who's like a higher power. Like, they did, they did it with the Fallen, and they did it with Sentinel Prime, and now they've done it with Quintessa. When will Megatron ever just be able to be the villain? I don't understand why they can't seem to just use him, because he looks sick in this film. He looks really awesome. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else? I've got notes here, just give me a sec. Um, yeah, there's no mention of any of the other characters from, like, the previous movies. Sam is just, like, he's he's been written off now, he's gone. They don't even speak of him. Um, and, yeah. Also, some jokes just do not land. Like, it's, it's, I was watching it and I sort of turned to my brother and I was like, what the fuck? Anthony Hopkins' first, well, it's like his first introduction to Cade, the uh, the main character. And um, they make a joke about robot dementia, but it just goes on for ages. And I was like, is this going to stop yet? It's not funny. Just stop. Like, even Anthony Hopkins can't make it funny. Although Anthony Hopkins did have some pretty hilarious, like, scenes in this film. 
Uh, there's a scene where he tells the Prime Minister to shut up. And, like, from what I've learned from watching Thor and from watching this, if Anthony Hopkins tells you to shut up, you fucking do it. Because he's just, I don't know, he's, just, he's powerful. Just the way he says things. So, yeah. Um, pros. Here are the pros of the film. Cogman is fucking sick. He is really, really cool. Transformers actually transform now. Unlike in the fucking last film where they sort of did that weird thing where they, like... They, what do they do? They sort of like turn into cubes and shit and then reassemble themselves. It was weird. Um, it was much better than Age of Extinction. I'll give it that. Also, they did actually give the Decepticons a little bit of personality as well because they decided to make them more into like criminal thugs, which I actually really liked. Unfortunately, they all fucking die. They all die basically in like the second scene they appear. They, they have... Um, they all sort of like meet up in this like town because they're hunting for Cade and the Autobots and um, Cade rigs everything to blow then Drift and Crosshairs just fucking decapitate one of them. I think it was Onslaught which was even more of an insult because like that's a fucking Combaticon and he went out like a little bitch. Uh, Mohawk, the little motorbike dude. What was the fucking point? Like they they were like the Decepticons were cool in their designs even though they reuse a lot of the other assets from the other films onslaught is a rehash of long haul so is canopy the uh, the transformer that the uh, the kids hiding under um that's a a remodel of long haul if you look closely from revenge of the fallen um they just they reuse a lot of assets but like my favorite well, one of one not my favorite part but i love the fact that they made steve Buscemi into a transformer it was fucking brilliant although he had a weird name as well day trader so let's talk story. I mean, there's not a lot to talk about because it's a Michael Bay Transformers movie, but hey. Um, so basically, Cade, Cade Yeager. I'm sorry, but there is no one on this fucking planet called Cade Yeager. Come on. Um, Cade Yeager is a fugitive on the run. And uh, he's like, he's investigating like Transformer sightings and he's trying to rescue them. He's in Chicago, like in the ruins of Chicago, uh, trying to rescue these Transformers. Um, and he gets like a little like well I think it's Steel Bane I think that's the name of the Transformer that gives him the little talisman and it's like a little thing like a little like knight thing and it sort of wraps itself around his arm eventually he's like now nah, you keep it I don't want it but it follows him because it's got little legs and the little talisman follows him um, I think the knights in this film are really cool as well because like they show off a lot of like King Arthur stuff is it King Arthur? I don't even know what the fuck it is like Camelot, Merlin, that sort of shit um, that was cool. I wanted to see more of it, although it still managed to Michael Bay its, its sort of way onto the screen by having like white fireworks explode from like trebuchets. It was a little cheesy, like you know, for a for a medieval thing. But you know, whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Stanley Tucci that plays Merlin. I was looking at it, and I'm not. Like, I need to Google it. In fact, let me fucking check. It fucking is! It is Stanley Tucci! <laughs> okay, cool. Right, so Stanley Tucci plays Merlin, and Merlin's like kind of like a drunk, like a wizard. And uh, he gets the, uh, the the staff, the MacGuffin, from uh, one of the knights of Cybertron. And uh, that lets him command, I think its name is Dragonstorm, it's like a combiner. And the, uh, the knights can combine into this big-ass three-headed dragon. And uh, yeah, Merlin uses that to to win the, the battle that they were, they were fighting. Um, and they're like the knights of the round table. And it was it is a really cool, actually, it's a cool scene where like all the uh, the knights, like they raise their swords and then the Transformer knights like raise the swords above them as well. That was cool, it looked awesome. And I think the uh, the designs for the knights look sick as well. That's the, that's the thing though, like these, the, in Age of Extinction, my complaint was the Transformers looked so over-designed and they still kind of do. Um, they just look so over designed that you can't tell what their men are transform into. Like Bumblebee in, in uh, Age of Extinction, he had like a weird like chest and you couldn't really tell exactly what he would turn into. Like unlike in like Dark of the Moon or like the first movies or whatever, where you could see the Camaro like on his chest. This is what I was trying to get at. And like Optimus Prime in uh, like the first movie, you can see exactly how he would transform. But then in, the, in Age of Extinction and in this film, his design is so overly complex that you can't tell what he would be if he was to transform. 
yeah, it's that was um, like a, a complaint that I had, and I was sort of raising that with my brother, and uh, they kind of agree. That, like they just, I feel like they're a little bit over designed. Anyway, let's get back to the uh, the story. Um, so Kay's got this little talisman thing. He doesn't know he's got it. Um, there are some kids in Chicago that he, he rescues um, because they're well, they were hiding underneath a transformer called Canopy, and then the humans decided to shoot Canopy. And then Cade rescued them from these like Ed two oh nine like what Robocop walkers. Like what the fuck are they? Why? I don't understand. Also, I'm pretty sure there are some like mini drones that they use because every fucking military, you know, Michael Bay film has to have these mini drones. And they look like Thai bombers. They I swear to god they look like Thai bombers. Um anyway, where am I? I'm trying to remember exactly what happens because I didn't bother taking notes because I just sort of switched my brain off and just enjoyed the film because I just don't... Right, here's a thing. Here's a thing. Everyone craps on these Michael Bay films. And see, I know they are bad. Like, I, I understand they're bad. But I like to just switch my brain off and just fucking just, just watch them. Just, like, just why not? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't watch them to shit on them. I just sort of watch them to enjoy them. Because, I don't know, like, the first film is my favourite. It will always be my favourite. It was a film that got me into Transformers. In fact, actually, every time I see a Transformers movie, I end up buying them. And I really shouldn't, because I'd, I'd kick the habit. But I picked up Barricade, and um, he's actually quite good. And then I thought, oh, Barricade's quite good. I'll get Drift. And I've got Drift now, so... I'm not back in the game, don't worry. I don't... I'm not... I, I, I'm toying with the idea of doing reviews again. I don't know if I'm going to do it yet. Be patient. I don't know. Um, what else, what else, what else about the film? Yeah, Megatron makes a deal with the, the TRF. Now, every Michael Bay Transformers movie has to have a human task force with an acronym, like NEST, or what was the last one? It wasn't an acronym, it was just Cemetery Wind from uh, Age of Extinction. This one is the TRF, and the TRF are a government agency thing that hunt down Transformers, and Megatron makes a deal with them, makes a deal with Lennox. And I think Lennox is like undercover for like the military in the TRF. Um, so Megatron makes a deal with Lennox to get these uh, these Decepticons released. And this is where I actually audibly laughed in the film. Because hearing Megatron say the names of these weird ass Decepticons that he actually wants to get released. It's so dumb. <laughs> they sound so stupid. He's like... Dreadbots, Mohawk, Nitro Zeus, what the fuck? It sounded so dumb, and I just sort of looked at my brother, and I was like, what? It's, it... no, the names are stupid, like, they really are. It's like the names that you would see on, like, the bottom of concept art, that they just sort of kept. Um, so, yeah, hearing Megatron actually say them was kind of weird. Mohawk's okay, because it's like, it fits with his design, but then you've got Dreadbot. Could you not have thought of a better fucking name? He just uses Crowbar's design anyway, so just call him Crowbar from Dark of the Moon. I don't know. Um, but yeah, like hearing him say all these 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 weird names, it's it's weird, it's strange. But anyway, the Decepticons, uh, they're all released. They meet up with Megatron and they track down Cade. And the Autobots, and they all sort of like, you know, they escape to this town, this abandoned town, where that's the scene you see in the trailer where Megatron picks up Squeaks, and um, yeah, Isabel sort of runs out because she's that character, she's that edgy character that has to run out and just confront Decepticons. Yeah, I'm only 11 years old, or whatever the fuck she was, and then yeah, all the Decepticons get wrecked. Like, Cage rigged the entire town to blow, so he just like presses the button. Everything explodes. Drift and uh, Crosshairs just annihilate Onslaught. Bumblebee kills Mohawk, I think. They all fucking die. Uh, Dreadbot gets eaten by Grimlock. That's another thing. The Dinobots don't really appear a lot. They're like, why are they even... What are they doing there? It's, it's really kind of odd. Also, there's baby Dinobots. Like, which Dinobot is female to make them? I don't know. Does it work like that with Transformers? I'm not that nerdy. I don't understand. But, yeah. Um, where else are we going? 
So they have that British woman from the trailer. She's her name's Vivian, because like that was that's another thing that is actually it's pretty funny. The Amer American peoples, their their imagination or their what they think of British people is that everybody goes to Oxford University and, and his talks are really, really posh and have very posh names like my name's Vivian Wembley. My name's Edmund Burton. No. No, it's not. It's not like that. It's really not. Um but yeah, they they find um Peter Quill's mother. That's that's who plays Vivian, I can't remember her name. Laura Laura Haddock, I think it is. Um and she is the last descendant of Merlin. So she is the only person that can actually wield this staff. So does that. Um, Optimus is on Cybertron. He's like, what happened to my world? Meets Quintessa. Quintessa turns him and he's now Nemesis Prime. Um, and it, they don't really explain that very well either. But, you know, whatever. Optimus Prime doesn't appear a lot in this film. Like, he's hardly in it. And that's fine, because I'm sick of bipolar Prime. Like, he's, he's he's fucking mental. He's so nasty now. He used to be like, oh, freedom is the right of all sentient beings. And now he's just he's like, I'll kill you. Like, I don't like Optimus anymore. That's what this, these films have done. I do not like Optimus. Bumblebee's where it's at, though. I like Bumblebee in the minute. Um, Anthony Hopkins is pretty great in this film. He plays a character called Edmund Burton. He's like the last surviving member of this ancient order that protects Transformers or protects the secret history of Transformers because what it's implying is that Transformers have been on Earth for centuries and uh, that would also imply that Bumblebee has been on Earth far longer than when he met Sam in the first movie so yeah um, he's part of like a secret society trying to figure out you know this whole prophecy thing that's going to be coming true with uh, Quintessa and Cybertron coming towards Earth Earth is Unicron now like in Transformers Prime, there's like these horns that are coming out from from Earth, and uh, Earth is Unicron. So there's that. It definitely sequel baits. It really does. But basically, all the Decepticons die. They get the MacGuffin. Optimus takes the MacGuffin. Then, what happens? Megatron takes the MacGuffin of Optimus. Optimus turns good again, and then Optimus basically saves the day. And then the movie just stops. It just stops. It, it did the thing with like Dark of the Moon, where as soon as like the final battle is over, it goes dun 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 dun, and then there's just Optimus does a speech and the film ends, and then Quintessa apparently didn't die in the final battle, because like honestly, just go and watch the fucking movie or don't. It, it doesn't matter. It's 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 not bad. Well, it's it's sort of like half and half. I didn't hate it. I didn't walk out of it like Age of Extinction thinking, bruh, what's just happened? Why did I waste my time with that? Because I hated Age of Extinction. I really did. For even from the fucking first day I saw it, I didn't like it. This film, I felt, had some enjoyment. You know, there's some enjoyment to be had in the, in the last night. And uh, it's worth watching. Cogman is brilliant. He's like a little headmaster. And he's like a sociopath. He's mental. But he's brilliant. Um... He has some pretty funny, like, one-liners. He's the funniest part of the film. Him and Anthony Hopkins are the funniest part of the film. And they actually, they did get some laughs. Some jokes landed, some jokes didn't, but they were more for comic relief. And, um, yeah. There's there's not really any, like, emotional scenes in this film. No Autobots die. Um, so, yeah. Nearly every Decepticon dies. In fact, I think every Decepticon does die, except for Megatron, who gets his arm cut off again. Which means in the next film, he's going to get a redesign again, just after, like, I love this design of Megatron, he looks sick. But they're going to change it, because that's how it goes. Um, but yeah, that is about it. That's really all I can say without, you know, going to see I've only seen the film once, so that's all I can like say off the top of my head. And like I said, I am freehanding this video. Um, but yeah, um, that is it for my review of The Last Night. Sorry if this video was a bit weird. Um... I've got notes in front of me and I'm just sort of talking just at the camera. I'm barely going to edit this because why? It's Transformers 5. We're five movies in and it's just not getting any better. Well, it is, but it's not, if you, go, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, anyway, cheers for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next one, whenever that is. Maybe reviews are coming back, maybe they're not. Bye.